Good morning. It's great to be with you once again. Um, today is Sunday, November 6th. It is the last Sunday before Veterans Day. So for any of our veterans out there, we just want to say thank you for your service. We also want to say thank you to the families of the veterans for the sacrifices that they made as well. Well, today we'll be talking about what the mission of Jesus uh, really is. Um, but before we do that, I would like to take an opportunity to introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ellen Cusack. I'm the pastor at Alloway United Methodist Church and Canton United Methodist Church here in uh, Salem County. Uh, we worship in person on Sunday. Canton worships worships at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, and Alloway worships at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Um, sometimes our schedule changes up if we have a fifth Sunday, and on a fifth Sunday we worship together. Uh, and also, uh, since Thanksgiving is coming, uh, I don't know about you, but I feel that I have so much to be thankful for. So our congregations will have um, a short Thanksgiving uh, service, uh, informal. Canton will have their service on Monday, November 21st at 6.30 p.m. Canton will have their service uh, on Tuesday, November 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we invite you to attend. They'll only be in person. Uh, but we just want to take uh, an opportunity to tell God that we're thankful for um, all he's done for us. So uh, before uh, we go on anymore, let's uh, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the way that we can gather together, Lord. Um, we know that your word says that wherever two or three are gathered together, you will be with them. So, uh, Father, we're thankful for your presence. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be with us during this time. God, we ask that your spirit would be poured out upon us. Father, I ask that it would be your word in my mouth. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke. We've been talking about um, the Jesus we thought we knew. As we look a little bit closer at Jesus and we uh, read the Beatitudes, for instance, we learn a little bit more about Jesus than maybe we thought we knew before. So today, we're going to be reading one of the parables that Jesus told. And this is from Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Luke 18, 9 to 14, and I will be reading from the NIV. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And this is the word of God. 
The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. No, that's not an excerpt from a speech by President Biden or former President Obama or former President Trump as they converged upon Pennsylvania yesterday, just a few days before Election Day. But this is a quote from Isaiah 61 that Jesus read from the scroll in the synagogue in Nazareth at the beginning of his ministry. And this is really the ministry of Jesus Christ. In the synagogue that day, Jesus went on to explain that God brought healing to those whose hearts were humble and who were ready to receive, whether or not they were Jews. Each month when we gather for communion, we read a scripture from the hymnal that says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. A few weeks ago, we looked at the Beatitudes and we noticed that there was a great reversal, that the values of the world were not the values of Christ. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the merciful. Jesus showed us a new way of looking at our lives and, and our ministry. And we found that the way we respond to God's grace has much to do with our joy and our happiness. In our reading today, we read the parable about the Pharisee and the tax collector. Well, the Pharisees were the religious leaders, um, very legalistic, had a lot of laws and rules that they obeyed. They were the church people of Christ's day. And um, the scripture that we read says that Jesus was speaking to those who were confident of their own righteousness and look down on everybody else. Well, the tax collectors were very unpopular people. They worked for the Romans in collecting taxes and often collected more than needed for their own pockets. They served uh, the Romans and took advantage of their own people for their own benefit. Well, in this illustration, the Pharisee, in prayer, expresses his thanksgiving to God that he's not like other people, even the tax collector who stood at a distance. In our world today, maybe we would say that this Pharisee uh, took communion every month. He gave his tithes to the church. He was upright in his behavior, and he never missed a church meeting. While the tax collector was aware of how he fell short, he knew that the only hope for him was in the grace of God. No one even wanted him on a church committee. He wasn't trustworthy. But he humbled himself before God, asking God to have mercy on him because he was a sinner. Jesus said that this tax collector would be justified before God because he had humbled himself before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Another example of this great reversal of Jesus Christ. 
in Philip Yancey's book, The Jesus I Never Knew, he explains that the Jews in Jesus' day had a religious caste system that was based on steps toward holiness. And the architecture of the temple um, expressed those views even in its design. He describes a ladder reaching up to heaven. Philip Yancey says, Gentiles and half-breeds like the Samaritans were permitted only in the outer court of the Gentiles. A wall separated them from the next partition, which admitted Jewish women. Jewish men could proceed one stage further, but only priests could enter the sacred areas. Finally, only one priest, the high priest, could enter the most holy place, and that was just once a year on the day of Yom Kippur. Well, all this was blown out of the water when Jesus arrived on the scene, and he lovingly broke some of the rules that the Pharisees so carefully followed. The unclean held no danger for Jesus, whether it was the woman with the issue of blood or the leper or the demon possessed or even the physically handicapped. Jesus wasn't afraid of being defiled. Rather, he made those who were defiled and unclean clean. We need to mention that it wasn't that Jesus didn't take into consideration our behavior because behavior matters. What we do matters. But our behavior isn't how we're accepted or forgiven by God. It's only by God's grace that we're forgiven and justified. And there were no undesirables with Jesus. A man came into a church one Sunday and it was the height of the time of uh, church shootings. Um, he was thin and unkept. He carried a duffel bag. He sat in the back and kept to himself. The ushers uh, in the back of the church talked to each other about uh, how best to address the situation. Their anxiety level rose significantly when he left his bag and went to the men's room. He returned in a few minutes. As the service began, he sat quietly. And week after week, he returned. He left notes on his offering envelopes. He shared pictures of his grandchildren. All quietly left in the offering plate. He spoke to the pastor after church one Sunday as he needed some assistance, and he humbly received help. Well, a call came one day for his daughter. He had passed away quietly and without notice. His landlord discovered him when he went to check on him. And as we met and prayed with his daughter, she told us the story of a successful barber married with children who, after divorce, began a slow descent into disabling depression. One thing remained, his love for his family and his love for God. And one question remained, had we loved him? Had we been Jesus to him? He had been accepted, but had he been loved? And that's the mission of Jesus, to lovingly usher us into the family of God, to proclaim the good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free and release the prisoners from darkness. It's when we, like Christ, reach out to those who are broken, sick or undesirable, that we join Christ in his mission. When we sit with the family member, everyone tolerates but doesn't really like. When we greet a neighbor who doesn't mow his lawn, 
just a talk. When we take cookies to the mom whose kid is always the one in trouble, that's when we show the love of Christ. As I thought about this this week, I came to the conclusion that it's really only through the work of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus working in me, molding me, of of his changing my attitude and even making me slow down that I can accomplish this mission of Christ. Can you accomplish his mission? Can you minister to the poor and the brokenhearted with a humble attitude? Jesus was our suffering servant. He knew fear. He knew abandonment. He faced sorrow, all to accomplish his mission. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you loved us so much that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. Father, we see his ministry to those who were broken. Father, we ask that you would work in us. Father, that you would humble us so that we might accomplish Christ on this mission. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the love of Christ be active in your heart, be heard in your word, be seen in your action, and inform your choices today and all days. Amen.